Mr. Toastmaster, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, when we um, evaluate a speech, we evaluate it to certain criteria. Um, so in this speech, it was Ross Collins. The purpose of this project is for the member to identify his or her primary leadership style or styles. Okay? Member to share some aspects of his or her primary leadership style and discuss leadership styles in general. The member will deliver a well-organized speech about some aspect of leadership styles. He may choose to speak about his or her own leadership style or the leadership style of others. This speech may be humorous, informational, or any style the member chooses. It should not be a report, uh, it should be a speech, and uh, understanding your leadership style. I'll be looking at clarity, I'll be looking at vocal variety, I'll be looking at eye contact, I'll be looking at gestures, audience awareness, the comfort level, and the interest. <coughs> Thank you, Lionel. Can I ask you what the time is for that particular speech? Yes. Five to seven minutes. Thank you. Timekeeper, five to seven minutes. The speaker will be assisted by the lighting system on the floor in front. It gives me pleasure then to introduce to you our speaker, speaking to the title, Ask the Questions. Ask the questions. Would you please welcome Mr. Ross Collins? Mr. Toastmaster, hey, hey, gentlemen. My second speech, leadership styles. And exactly 120 words <laughs> When I first looked at this topic, I started thinking about the planning phase. I thought to myself, this should be easy. You run a business, you're a boss, just tell them what you do all day. Tell them what kind of leader you are, and what kind of leader am I? I exited the Pathways program on my computer, and I carried on with my work there. But the question would not get out of my head, what kind of leader am I? Well, I struggled to answer this throughout the day, but the evening I was even more perturbed. What kind of leader are you? Or worse, are you even a leader at all? <laughs> so as one does, in times of despair, I went to the greatest leader of them all, Google. And this is what I found. It's a small, we have a very fancy printer. So which way am I? The guy in the front, or the guy at the back? And this made it even more confusing. I can honestly tell you that sometimes I'm the first one, sometimes I'm the second one. Sometimes I'm both, sometimes I'm none. Sometimes I'm at the side of the chain and sometimes I'm not even in the picture. So what now? Well, for this reason, the business and corporate world came up with something called leadership strategies to help simplify it for a guy like me. There are a number of these strategies and styles out there. There are a few common ones that seem to crop up all the time. The first one I saw is democratic leadership. Basically, <coughs> it's exactly what it sounds like. The leader makes decisions but allows input from his team before making a final decision. Although he or she makes the final call, everybody does have a say. The fact that it's rated of this specific style, they say it's commonly effective. After that, you get autocratic leadership, which is the exact opposite of democratic leadership. In this style, the leader makes decisions without taking input from anybody else. Employees are neither considered nor consulted in the process. Everything is stipulated by the leader. This rating, as expected, is rarely effective. That's R-A-R-E-L-Y, rarely. <laughs> Transformational leadership is next. And this one is always transforming or improving the company's conventions. So employees might have a specific task that they do every week. And yes, it is job to push them a little bit more and try and motivate them to think outside the box. Just, just achieve that a little bit more. Rating for this one, sometimes effective. Transactional leadership is the next one, which is quite common nowadays. That's when a leader or a manager rewards his team for the exact work they did. For instance, maybe a marketing group, if they did enough leads for the week, they might receive a bonus or incentive. That's happening nowadays, and that rating is sometimes effective. The next one is what they call coach-style leadership, which is very similar to that of a sports team coach, 
where the leader identifies and nurtures the individual strengths of the person and then finds a strategy to try and get the whole team to work together nicely, all as one. The emphasis is focusing on the growth and the success of the individual to achieve a common goal. That's probably my favorite of the lot and rated as comedy effective, so that's good. The last one, instead of doing it for me to say, is bureaucratic leadership. In this one, the leaders go only by the books. They may, unlike autocratic leadership, they may take advice or input from others, but if they don't agree with company policy or past procedures, will be ignored. This rating also really effective. So that's the five of them. Wow, what a mouthful. I'm pretty boring, right? Now, not one of these rates is superbly effective or even mind-blowingly effective. All of them are just commonly or sometimes effective. So what this research did for me just reiterated my belief that there's no one correct fixed leadership strategy for myself. And I speak only for myself here. Some people might need to identify a strength versus a strength or a strategy and focus on that and that's fine. But I can't. For me, every person is different. Every crisis, every situation, every moment is different. So my approach is more of a pay-as-you-go method. And I'm not always going to get it right, so I can't commit to one service provider for two years. I simply just try to learn from occasions when I do get it right, and more so from occasions when I don't. I identify strengths and I know my weaknesses. I look at people I admire, friends, family, business people, and I, I look at their actions and try to harness a set of my own skills. I borrow things that they do well, and make sure not to replicate the things they do poorly. When moments of doubt creep in, like when I had to do speech, as I mentioned earlier, I simply have a conversation with myself and create a little checklist. Almost like somebody else is talking to me. Awkward maybe when you do it in your office and somebody walks in, it's a little weird. But nevertheless, it works for me. And it goes something like this. So Ross, are you dynamic enough? Do you adapt when the situation requires? And do you bring about positive change? Are you balanced? You must manage, but not micromanage. Sometimes you need to take a step back. But that doesn't mean I can run away. So, okay, okay, that's pretty good points, I'll tell myself. I'll work on that, what else? Well, you said that you need to be dynamic, but you also need to be consistent. Be both at the same time might not even be possible. Is it? I don't know. I generally wonder, is it? But I do know, you can't be friendly one day, grumpy the next, approachable one day, and then not available the next. So I guess the answer then comes back to balance. So that's three checkpoints so far, not bad. What else do great leaders do? I'll spin my grumpy captain brings into mind. Well, they motivate. So that's a good one. And I'll put it on my list. They inspire hope. Another good one. Number five on my checklist. They make the decisions that nobody else wants to. And that's a tough one. It deserves a place in the list. They listen to the voices of those around them and have the strength to be a voice for everybody. Wow, that's a deep one, but a good one. And most importantly, from my favorite poem, they keep their head and all about them on using theirs. That's number eight. Quite a checklist to live up to. Do I get it right? Sometimes, sometimes not. But I'm conscious of my every action because I know it affects those people around me. Do I have all the answers? Definitely not. But a wise man once told me, to lead, you don't have to have all the answers. Just make sure that you ask good questions. And that works for me. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you.